pull up. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 167th episode of the Alter Ego Podcast. And I admit, I said that weird. 167. But anyway, we're here. We're back. We're happy to be with you. With me, as always, Mr. Ryan. How else would you say 167? I don't know. I think I said a 167. I think I threw one in there. I don't know. Ryan, how you doing up there in the Great White North, sir? Uh, I think grammatically it would be 167. Right. Not A or the. Yeah. Right. I knew it was wrong. Can we move on? Sure. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Wednesday. By the time you're listening to this. Uh, okay, so back, days. ready to rock and roll. We got a lot of things to talk about. A lot of things that have happened since the superb owl has gone off. Um, I love the superb owl. Yeah, a lot of good things. Um, we got a Deadpool trailer. We got officially got a Deadpool trailer. Do we want to just do uh, quick quick reactions to that? Huh? I don't even remember it. So okay, <laughs> uh, no- I think it was I think it was the perfect trailer because it gave us a lot and nothing at the same time. Um, yeah, in terms of a lot, I think it really set the tone for how the movie's going to be because Deadpool's talking to the TVA about getting pegged in the first 30 seconds and how it's new for Disney. I am not new to pegging, but Disney is. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, okay, he is. And that was just like a, a nod to the camera to say like, Hey, this is not going to be toned down for anybody. (laughs) <laughs> um i think it gave us a ton of speculation as to what's gonna happen they show deadpool in a lot of different areas one of which even appeared to be the opening to age of ultron just gonna say yes yes yep i mean we definitely get a wolverine it's the the, the movie is called deadpool and wolverine what um, if what if just a crazy hypothesis right what if it's deadpool's fault that ultron ends up being a part of armor wars i think a lot of it's going to be deadpool's fault i really do and i think he's not going to care either no i had i gave you my premise of what this movie what we thought this movie was about what was that I have no idea. That was weird. That was you, buddy. That was not me. Yeah. Anyway, okay. moving on. Uh, I think that the TVA, after the events of Loki season two, I think mm-hmm. the TVA approaches Deadpool and they're like, hey, we fucked up. Can you go and, and take care of a couple of our issues for us off the books, off the record kind of thing? Because if you see that scene when he's dragged to the TVA, they're the ones that are dressing him in his uniform. Yeah, I I don't I don't I don't know. I think it's I think it's it's a weird thing, right? Like I, I'm definitely gonna need to see more because there's no reason the TVA needs Deadpool. I mean, unless this is the TVA that we're used to, which it doesn't look like, and they are no. not pruning anybody, so they're morally not for that. But I think there's just too much to this to just go it's it's a it's a thing that they need to pluck somebody out of time. To be able to do this, I think it has some. It definitely has something to do with him stealing Cable's time machine in Deadpool two and going in because in the very first scene, a lot of people who died are there. It's true, you know, like Peter's there, his wife Vanessa's there, Shatterstar is there. Al doesn't die, but she's there. I mean, it's a lot of things that have changed. So, I don't know. It's going to be a good one. Also, there's rumor that uh, there's more than one version of Wolverine in the movie. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, I'm all about that. A conversation about Daniel Radcliffe, the boy who lived himself playing Wolverine. I'm so down for that. If if they have him as a variant, a Wolverine variant, we have got to get some sort of Harry Potter joke out of out of Deadpool. <laughs> I would love him to see him and just go, oh, 10 I points for Gryffindor. I can't that little... Uh... That little lightning bolt in his head. I yeah. 
Like, <laughs> he's he's gonna forever be Harry Potter, no yeah. matter what he does for me. Like, I can't. He's done so much good stuff. Um. Anyway, we'll get back to Deadpool later on. I assure you. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about some gaming here, though. The Nin- Nintendo Switch Two reportedly delayed until uh, the early months of 2025. Take your time, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm in no your, rush for another switch, anyways. It's, it's just fine as it is. I'm uh, anything that you do is an is an improvement. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be great. I don't mean that in a also, negative sense. I mean like anything that they change or upgrade, great. You're 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 making what you already have better. I'm down with it. And there's, I think there's a, a huge difference between a game getting delayed and a console being delayed because you know, it, um, Suicide Squad got delayed like five times. And then once it released, we all know why it got delayed so many times. Bad. Yeah, but it, it, that's the problem. It's still released bad. Yeah, but if you're delaying a console, that means you're you're taking the time to get the correct hardware in there, the correct software in there. You're obviously making some some vast improvements to the uh, the new console. So I'm all right with that. You know, wait, yeah. take your time, give us a, a stellar product, and I'll probably be more interested in buying it. Yeah. Have they uh, come out and said what it's going to be? Is it just like the Switch 2 Switch literally? 2. Like... I don't think we've even seen any images of it. Nothing. No. No. There hasn't been any leaks. Nintendo's usually pretty tight about that, too. Yeah. And they're very good because they'll make you kill yourself if you release any information <laughs> like here in the U.S. <laughs> you have to go commit Harakiri where you take the smaller of the two swords, mm-hmm. jab it into your abdomen, and pull it all the way up to your sternum and then turn it sideways and come over then there's no way for you to survive and if you're brave enough to do that nintendo and you get all the way over to this side of your ribs then somebody can stand behind you and they'll they'll grant you the honor of cutting your head off but if you cry and you wince you have to die bleeding out you gotta bring honor to your family thank yeah thank you for that thank you in regards to the switch too um (laughs) i mean oh Part of me uh, that was that was what we needed. <laughs> I hope they go that Xbox. Don't class. try that at home, kids. Don't try that at home. And they make it so if I don't buy a new Switch, or I do buy the new Switch. I don't have to buy all my games over again. That would be very smart of them. I would. But love if that, it's Nintendo, it's Nintendo so. yeah, you're gonna have to buy everything again. Hmm. But there's I don't. I don't think they do that because they're gonna try and compete with PS5 and with uh, Xbox Series X. I don't think they're they're gonna do that. Uh, hey, buy all of your shit again because people are gonna be like, I'll just go play Xbox. Um, well, I was going to say there are still people who play their Nintendo 64s. Yeah. I don't know too many people who are still rocking the PS ones because of how good it is. You know what I mean? Uh, I think Nintendo makes a lasting good product. Anyway, uh, PS five reportedly outsold Xbox series X and S two to one. Doesn't surprise me. Okay. That that is a little shocking, given that the PS5 went through nearly a two year period where the console literally wasn't available. When we've had this conversation several times, PlayStation sells in a lot more countries and has been around longer than Xbox. So good for them. I think that there's that's a, part of the reason why they end up selling two to one now. Right. Well, I actually thought about this too. I think there's a there's a little bit more of a reason to it. Play PlayStation's been around longer than Xbox has. You know, the PlayStation 1, the biggest competitor to the PS1 was actually the Nintendo 64. So right. you have a certain demographic, you know, by the time Xbox came out, we were getting the, the PS2. So you have a you have a core fan base that has been with the PlayStation longer than Xbox, and a lot of people don't switch over when you get into a console. Right. You pretty much All play that, that console the entire time. All their friends are on PlayStation. Yeah. So I, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that PlayStation is outselling Xbox 2 to 1 because... A lot of people started on PlayStation. Yeah. But, I mean, that's different now because you uh, you have a lot of other younger kids and younger generation. They're coming up, and you know what I mean? So, like, back in our day, yeah, we either had a PlayStation or you had an Xbox. Me, I ended up with both of them. But yeah. I lean more towards Xbox now just because of yeah. the whole ecosystem as a whole. I, I, played, uh, I played PS2 and was very loyal to the PS2, enjoyed the mm-hmm. PS3, and then the Xbox 360 came out, and it was all over. No, see, I actually got an Xbox <clears throat> One. PS2 is where I got off the ship. Yeah, did not have a PS2. Yeah, that's same. Um, Halo, yeah. Halo well, spe- Two. Speaking of PlayStation, they have a game that is making waves right now in the gamer community. Hell Divers Two. I gotta tell you, it looks gorgeous. It looks, looks phenomenal. So fun. It looks like everything you want in a game, and it's a PlayStation exclusive, which pisses me off. Um. Does it make me want to get a PS5? No. <laughs> but um, 
damn, I want to play that game. It looks so incredibly fun. Customizable Already- guys, open world, killing giant bugs, having all kinds of ordnance, squad play. Sounds like a crazy time. I already know what's going to happen with you and the PlayStation. You're going to get the five like 11 months before the six comes out. Yeah. 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 Just like you did with the four. <laughs> yeah. And then turn around and get rid of the four. Turn around and get rid of it. Yeah. Very quickly. Yeah. I was like, you know what? This sucks. <laughs> it, it, honestly, the games are crazy fun. It's just who can you play with? Nobody. You know what I mean? I'm not the biggest board. fan of the yeah. PS controller either. I like I like the feel, the ergonomics of the Xbox controller way better. Like, you like to get your hands on it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so apparently players not logging out of the servers are ruining that game for people because they can't get in. So people are just <laughs> staying logged in to the servers for Helldivers 2 so they can keep playing it, and people are getting locked out of this game. Is that correct? I don't that know. is correct. Yeah. Uh, well, people, from what I've, what I've been reading on Twitter and Reddit is that people are staying logged in because of how long the queue times have been. Mm, so they'll just nope. stay logged into the game that way you know like you go have a uh you go eat dinner or you go have a drink or something you come back you're in the game still right mm. well that's interesting i mean i i don't support that but i get it i get it 100 <laughs> percent. i don't i don't support it but i'd be doing the same shit <laughs> there's those those long few <laughs> times sometimes it's like man let me go but see that's the the thing. Sandwich real quick it's 2024, bro. You shouldn't be having these Q issues on a game that gets launched, especially a party title. I, I don't disagree with with that comment, but at the same time, they didn't know it's going to be this successful. They didn't know that those streaming platforms are going to grab it by the throat and let it take off the way that it did. So it, I you got to commend the devs. They said don't buy the game until they fix the server issues. They're like, it's cool to wait. You can wait to buy it, and then you know once we fix everything, buy it then. It actually broke its own concurrent player record like four times over the weekend. Wow. So I, I think I think the issue there is I, I don't think the de- developers had any idea how huge this game was going to be, how how you know how much it exploded with the streaming community. So they probably just weren't prepared with the servers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that sounds pretty standard anymore for these yeah. games that just blow up out of nowhere. They're synonymous with bad queue times and server issues and, and stuff like that. So I don't know. Hopefully they fix it and decide they want to share with the, the Xbox boys. I mean, I understand PlayStation if you're scared. I understand. I get it. I get it. Alpha Squad's over here on Xbox and you don't want us joining. I listen. I do worry <laughs> too. Okay. So you guys just stay lonely over there. When you're ready for the real gamers to show up, switch it over to Xbox. Well, hold hold on, hold on. Let him let him finish his tweet. <laughs> Me? Oh yeah. <laughs> nope. All right. What did it say? How long can you choke yourself until you pass? It's like six minutes. Um. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk. Let's talk movies and TV. There's a new <laughs> Predator movie in the works, baby. Oh yes. I love it. I love yeah. it. This is one of the few franchises that you can continue pumping out movies for, and I will be there day one every time. Yep. I I got to say, uh, when Prey was coming out, it had to be every other day that I checked Hulu and was like, is it out? When is it coming out again? Prey? Guys, you guys know about Predator Prey? Uh, that means when this movie comes out, I have to do it. I have to. I have to do my normal watch through of all the Predator movies. I actually it's just like, watched Predator Two the other day. Danny it's Glenn so Predator good. Two. It's, it's, so good. It's, it's so good, dude. It's so it, good. It is, in my opinion, I know I've said this before. It's the best Predator movie. Oh, I don't agree with that, but I would not knock that opinion either. You don't have to agree with it because it's true. I still kind of like one a little better than two. The o- yeah, the OG Predator is uh, atop my list. Why? Um, it's. It's well. I guess there's a little bit of bias there for nostalgia. Yeah, I was gonna say there's okay. some of the nostalgia, but too like just one of my favorite scenes in probably any movie ever is when they're flying in to Longtail Sally. Bro. <laughs> I, I love that. That is not like even anything my, to do with the Predator. Not even anything to do with the Predator at first, and then. Yeah, just great. I know that was a terrible rendition of that song, but somebody out there will love it. And then this will uh, make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Yeah, <laughs> 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 not even Ventura, baby, ain't got time to bleed. 
<laughs> I mean, sure, that's got the iconic cast. I'm I am not gonna knock at the cast in Predator One. Sure, they're definitely iconic. Predator Two, though, let's forget. Let's not forget. We had Bill uh Bill Paxton, Danny Glover, Danny Glover, Gary Busey when he wasn't cracked out and crazy. That was pre motorcycle accident, Gary Busey. Yeah. And uh, there was just so much, so much going for that movie compared to Predator One. You know what I mean? That was one of the very few because you y'all know I'm not a sequel guy. If it's a yeah. something too, nah, I'm not watching it. But Predator, I'm here. I'm here for it. I mean, they had the government being involved and in knowing about the Predators. They had these guys that had no business fighting the Predator no business and 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 predators. you know they were dying like every single one the only one who doesn't die is danny glover and when danny glover's going against the predator watch that movie again two-thirds of that fight he's running yeah only thing he gets are lucky shots and then you got I, I'm a not gonna lie though my man danny was actually kind of jacked in that movie he was he's yeah. a big boy like that that's probably the biggest he's been in any movie he was still lethal weapon Danny Glover. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. He was old, but he went old, old. But it also showed a little bit more into the Predators and the way that they picked their targets and why they were doing what they were doing. Yeah, I was going to say the lore is a lot better than that, too. Yeah. Lore, I mean, lore is far better. Yeah. Yeah. And you knew nothing about them in Predator 1, which is cool. That made it very intriguing. But learning more about what they were fighting and like you know the government being like listen man we know these things are coming here's the stuff we know about them like you're out of your league dude stop trying to fight these things yeah yeah i think um, i watched it recently and i had never noticed but i was like holy shit the alien yeah i'm like there's a yeah there's a xenomorph in the back skull like, on the back the yep yep i always thought they just tried to tie that in on some crazy mm -hmm. We need to throw something out there, kind of bullshit. I'm like, really, Alien versus Predator? Well, there was there was supposed to be a Alien Predator movie in the '90s, and it never got it never went into production. Right. They didn't do that. In, what, what was it, 2004 or five? They finally did the Alien versus Predator. And I did I did not enjoy it. I enjoy Scar, who's the main Predator in that movie. He's the young one who goes in and and handles business, but. I don't know the rest of that. The human cast in that one, I could I could do without. That's the one with Sonali. Very bad. Yes. Oh, I can't. Yeah, predators um, was actually really good too. The one where they're dropped on that world. Oh yeah, and they're all like, with, um, and you got a Lawrence Fishburne, crazy. I yes. love it. Such a good uh, movie. Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody, yes, Adrian Brody. I was trying to think of his damn name, and then the the guy who played uh, Venom in Spider Man Three from Topher that seventy show. Topher Grace. Topher Grace, yeah, really good in that movie. Topher Grace, really very good, good. very good. Um, yeah, I don't know. So this one's supposed to be set in World War Two. All I can think about is just World War II weapons and this guy go you got the predator going after those damn Nazis. Oh, well, there's oh man, that's a great American that's actually a, the Nazis, you know, there's always that conspiracy theory where the Nazis were trying yeah. to get into alien technology. That'd be a great storyline. How about that? What about oh I would get a t shirt in a heartbeat of a predator killing a Nazi. Nazi. Yeah. Come on yeah. now. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's the Nazis that stumble upon the Predator in like Antarctica or something and they let one loose and all of a sudden it just goes on a rampage. Ooh. That'd be cool. <laughs> I actually would not mind seeing another AVP set in World War II. How wild would that movie be? Oh, yeah. Oof. Where the Germans are trying to do something to get the Predators to show up so they let the aliens loose. Oh, man. I don't know. World War II has had so many secret missions happen. It's like everything that happened in World War II was all propaganda. It was all just a secret mission to cover up Hellboy, to cover up, you know, so Captain much. America, yep. Red Skull. In, in other news related to the cinema world and things that are important to you, the, the, the listener, the actor who plays uh, Senator Palpatine has confirmed, yes, Palpatine did have sex. Good for him. <laughs> I want to explore that just for a moment, if I may. Oh. <sighs> Let's picture <laughs> Senator Palpatine. Now, was he having sex pre or post microwave? I'm thinking pre microwave. Ooh. Pre -microwave. Well, I mean, he is he is the <laughs> the Dark Lord. He is the Emperor. Yes. <laughs> Tell Giselle to come to my chambers. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not paying for dinner unless you see <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm afraid my penis will be quite operational when we reach my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! The, 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 we could go Darth on for an Vader, hour and a half. Darth Vader in his mechanical prison while Palpatine's trying to give him a lesson on how to use the lightning fingers <laughs> in bed. <laughs> oh boy! <sighs> I just love it. Like, what if he's like Emperor finally takes off that that black sinister robe and there's just a banana hammock hanging there, <laughs> like a oh tube balls hanging there. Man. And then you get the commentary of the stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah, I heard Palpatine's got a baby's arm under there. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call Palpatine tripod? <laughs> Watch when he turns quickly. You can see it hit the robe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Emperor, do you want me to use two fingers? Why is it always do Star it. Wars? We talked about... <laughs> do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> He's standing there, hands down, ass up. Oh my god, Emperor! I'm not sure. Do it. The Do question, it. the question that that popped into my mind, question that popped into my mind after I read this is, what kind of chick do you think he was into? No, that's not my question. I that's that, that's a great great question. Let's explore that. But what? Who was into him? Yeah, any broad looking for money or power. It ain't changed. You see that Galaxy's man wandering the halls away. looking like a raisin? Mm. Well, like, here's something that Star Wars has never established either. Can the force powers, like when you mind control somebody, can you mind control them to do anything? Or do you think there's like genie from Aladdin rules here where you can't make somebody fall in love with you? I mean, let me tell you something, nah, Rhino. The Jedi so. powers clearly state it only works on the weak minded. So he's getting so some uh there that he's like, you will do this. Three so things. he's pretty much he's pretty much getting like SEC sorority broads is what he's getting. Yeah, exactly. Right. Ugg boots a plenty on the Death Star. What that yeah. Um, this really old guy told me I was supposed to come up her <laughs> and just one okay. one one Korean guy. Hey, <laughs> uh, you know the, the emperor swings both ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll drop you off at the Louis Vuitton store. Right drop you off. <laughs> we'll, we'll have you released to Tatooine. <laughs> what's that line? What's that line he drops? What's that line he drops to uh, Anakin? I, there are some dark side abilities some might find. I can't remember unnatural. the word he uses. Unnatural. Unnatural. Yeah. <laughs> I still think the I think you'll find it will be quite operational. That was probably yeah. the line. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, she's like, there's no way that he's gonna get it up when we get to his bedroom. Look at him, he's dying. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid. Because <laughs> you know he can search, search your feelings. <laughs> oh it's god. It's a trap! It's a trap! Admiral Akbar. Admiral Akbar. Just, oh god. <laughs> what are we gonna get in him? Good lord. Okay, uh, so let's talk a little bit of Marvel, shall we? Madam Web, worst Spider-Man spinoff for Sony and kind of being heralded as one of the worst comic book movies of all time, if not the worst. I, I don't agree. Because I will die on the hill that the Fantastic Four reboot is not only the worst comic book movie ever made, it's the worst movie ever made. I I, I would... I, so I follow the show and I suggest you too, too, if you're into like a really good nerd culture, these guys, super, super deep dive stuff. Very knowledgeable. I like them. their name is Screen Crush. They went over this movie and the main guy who like what he does for a living is watch Conquer. We said he fell asleep in the movie. It was that bad. He and pulled like, a Ryan. Yeah. yeah damn. And he was like, this is the worst movies. Like I can't even begin to explain. And at one point I was like, OK, are they doing it this badly on purpose? And I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. And I'm telling, I'm sorry, but think of the old Fantastic Four movie. I'm sure it's bad. But looking at that cast and all you have in this cast is Dakota Johnson. I don't buy it. I've asked this question probably 10 times on this show alone. I don't understand why Sony doesn't just say here. Here's the keys to all of our Marvel properties. 
You drive. We'll ride along. Mm -hmm. We will. We will help produce so we can make our money back. At the same time, just just cut us a check. Yeah. If I can't buy your property, I'm not going to keep making you tons of money, and I only get a little bit on the back end. Yeah, but they're losing money on some of these other titles, though. They lost money on on Morbius. They lost money. They're going to lose money on Madam Web. They had to have lost money on Carnage. Hey, I have been the guy saying all the time, well, for forever, <sighs> go ahead and let uh, that old uh, mouse over there stroke you a $2 billion check or whatever it is, and you just give up Spider-Man altogether. But that would, be, that would be the best bet, in my opinion. You also got to remember one of the things that Sony is not just Sony. It's also other businesses and Sony PlayStation, one of their biggest franchises that makes them the most money is Spider-Man. So they're not just going to go hand it over for them for movies. Well, the game rights they and the movie should. rights are two different things. Yeah, they don't have to sign over the movie rights just, or the game rights. Just sign over anything cinematic. So that includes television and the big screen. Yeah. But typically, whenever they buy those, they take everything that goes that goes with it. I mean, okay. I, but I don't think that would happen with Sony. I mean, has, has Disney has, produced any video games? Yeah. Yeah. Disney makes video what? games. Well, now they own uh, Microsoft, uh, don't they? No, no God, own, God, no. No, but, but uh, they own. Uh, they had Disney Infinity that they were doing for a long time. Then. Yeah, that was a thing. They've um, kind of gotten out of it somewhat, but it's still a pro like if it was their property, they would still they would hold on to it. Yeah, there's been a lot of people. I'm sure there's ways you could divvy this up where it would work out best for everybody. Hundred percent, I agree, and I don't think they're going to do anything without that. They're just going to keep pumping out trash. Uh, you know until disney eventually they go okay disney we've squeezed everything we can out of this it's yours but i don't know man well, um smart you just sell it man take the money i i agree there's one reason we forgot there is one reason why they're not going to sell it because the across the spider verse oh uh, yeah yeah franchise is that could actually end up being the best trilogy of comic book movies ever made to be honest with you it could be but at the same time how profitable is it really though you know oh, I mean? it's, it, it's an animated movie. It's incredibly profitable. If I'm going to make a hundred million I'm not, dollars. I'm not going to say that an animated series is going to top like Captain America or the Guardians. I, I just don't, I don't buy it. They've been great movies. They've been great movies. Been I've good. enjoyed them a lot. But yeah, no, none of them. If, if Into the Spider-Verse is on and Endgame is on, I'm popping on Endgame every time. I don't, I don't know. I just, it, and it's phenomenal. I, I don't think it's any secret. I love those movies, but I just don't think it compares at the end of the day. Um, but let's talk about one more thing. Fantastic Four. We finally have a casting. Finally have uh, the full Fantastic Four. And I know the big name was Pedro Pascal. And there Richard. are three other really big actors and an actress, obviously, that have been named. The one guy's the guy from The Bear who's playing Ben Grimm. Uh, Eben Moss Backrack? Backrack? Bachrock. Bachrock. I know he's a big fan of the show, buddy. Just DM me. Let me know how to say your last name. Okay. Uh, Joseph Quinn is playing the Human Torch. Who is Eddie from uh, Stranger Things. He was the leader yep. of the Hellfire Gang. Yep. And then uh, Vanessa Kirby is playing Miss Invisible. And I don't know. This is, this In, is Invisible I Woman. Invisible Woman. Okay. Invisible Woman. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> the most powerful member of the fantastic four oh that ooh. <laughs> you think so yep 100 percent. 100 you don't think it'd be the human torch nope i do not Ew. yeah i'm i wholeheartedly sue storm is definitely Ew. the uh the most powerful member now she's not like the smartest of the members obviously that's reed reed smarter than everybody johnny definitely has all the fantastic four have really cool things about them but um so <sighs> I'm excited for that casting, and clearly so is Marvel, because they set that movie, which, take this with a gigantic grain of salt, are set to release that movie two weeks after Superman Legacy comes out. Yeah, so Superman Legacy comes out July 11th, 2025. Fantastic Four comes out July 25th, 2025. So July is going to be a huge month for comic book movies in 2025. 2025, yeah. Um, this is Marvel's first family, right? This is, I mean, the Human Torch was the first, one of the first comic book characters ever created, which back in the day he was a robot, but still uh, fa Fantastic Four is the way that they started. 
And a cool point that was made uh, was that, you know, Marvel, this was the first comic book family where the monster was considered a, a hero, right? Because, like, let's think about Ben Grimm. <coughs> he has the makings of a supervillain, right? Like, uh, he he was created to be, you know, like most most bad guys have the experiment that goes wrong. They turn into this big monster, and then the big handsome guy comes in and beats up the monster. This was the first time that the monster chose to do the right thing and be on the good guy team. This was groundbreaking stuff for Marvel. Shout out to Screen Crush for that for that analogy. Um, but I, I when hearing that and knowing who this family is, Marvel clearly is like putting a lot of effort into this you guys remember we reported it on this show that when fantastic four came out the one that ryan hates this is the worst movie of all time marvel comics stripped all of fantastic four from their website they stopped producing the fantastic four comic they did not want that ip being ruined any further they yeah. wanted it to be theirs and their baby alone and now they finally have it back and that's coming out up against superman there's there's no coincidence there. Zero. Uh, you know, a, a part of me thought this too, and I, you know, I could be overstating this, but do you think any of this has to do with James Gunn? What? Do you think do you think that them releasing this two weeks after Superman Legacy is a little shot from Feige to James Gunn? Like, all right, not you at went all. to the other side. So you don't you don't think there's even a little bit? Not at all. Especially because, like, they had in depth dialogue that they were public about. That Fuggy was like, I'm happy for you. Do this. Go take it. That's really fun. Enjoy. These guys all seem to be really like comic focused, but yeah. it might be a little bit tagging on to James Gunn's success. People are wanting to go out to the movies. They're wanting to get out yeah. and see things in the theater. Superman's going to be out there, so people are going to be going to go see it. And Marvel's going, okay, let's let's stay relevant because 2024 only has one movie coming out. Let's throw the Fantastic Four in the mix, too. Well, or on the opposite end of that spectrum, I wonder if the MCU is like, maybe we can hop on the back of DC fatigue because if that movie sucks, people will be even more excited about the Fantastic Four. See, I don't, I don't think so. I just think it's maybe the next natural order of things. Like they have to let it go and come out next year. They don't have anything else coming out this year. Marvel's been well. They did, they did, they did usually have a July release for movies when they were pumping oh, them out two, three exactly. at a time. We got a summer yeah. release. It happens to be a Fantastic Four. You're just up next. It's just your number's called. I, I, I would agree with that if it was, it, no, <laughs> just, just because it's you. If it was Blade, yeah, okay, Blade's next up. But the Fantastic Four with the treatment that they've gotten, I don't think that's the case. Uh, the next question that that has been brought up is, could Pedro Pascal, who has meteorically risen to fame and become one of the most popular, most loved guys in all of Hollywood, it, could he be the next Robert Downey Jr. role for the MCU? I don't think so. I 100% think so, to the point where I think it is going to happen. Not could happen. I think it is going to happen. Let's not forget, Robert Downey Jr. was a nobody before uh, Iron Man. That's it. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Let me let me expound. Let me expound. Let me expound. After all of his arrests, drug issues, he had a couple small roles. He had the one with uh, Mel Gibson. He had Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. That was it. All of a sudden, US boom, Marshall. Iron Man. U.S. Oh, Marshals okay. was... Uh, U.S. Marshals was uh, prior to his rehab and all that stuff. But his him being a nobody, incorrect. He people saw Robert Downey Jr. said, "Oh shit, Robert Downey Jr. is an Iron Man." I mean, I, to say he's a nobody. <laughs> that's no, no, no. I, all right, nobody may have been the, the wrong nomenclature okay. to use, but that was that was exactly the reaction. Was oh shit, it's Robert Downey Jr. He's Iron Man. It wasn't. Oh my God, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Like, there's a difference between the two. I think he was, was he was he was almost forgotten about. Until Iron Man came out. He was almost forgotten about. And if it weren't for Mel Gibson, he would have probably never been an A-list actor ever again. We can't really that, tell that, but I mean that's that's speculation. I don't I can't say it's so wrong. anyways, back, I'm 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 spiraling out of control here. Let me go back to my my original point. Reed Richards is the character in Marvel that isn't just equivalent to Tony Stark. He might be higher than Tony Stark in terms of leadership, in terms of impact on the entire 
uh, realm of things with Marvel. I mean, he he led the he led the Avengers. He led everybody against Thanos during the Infinity Gauntlet series. He he's he's a leader, the same that Captain Mar uh, uh, Captain America. And now you have uh, an A list celebrity like Pedro Pascal, one of the biggest names on the planet, playing him. I think he can be the next Robert Downey Jr. I thought I thought for a second it was going to be uh, Doctor Strange, but he just has not been given that big of a stage to take that over. And I was going to say, I don't think they're going to do the same with the Fantastic Four. You, At best, we've gotten one Fantastic Four movie, maybe a sequel. You're talking about, like, Iron, like Robert Downey Jr., he got big off of Iron Man. Iron Man did well. And he's he's the guy. He's the guy we've known for all this entire, what, the whole entire saga, right? We fell in love with the guy. Pedro Pascal just popping up after, like, 30-something movies, and we already, I don't, I don't see him. I don't see him just taking over and being the guy. Like Deadpool, especially when Deadpool's a guy, I don't see. Uh, that that brings me to my point. I think um, Pedro Pascal and the character of Reed Richards, will he be everywhere? Yeah, he's gonna be somebody that touches every franchise if they do Reed Richards correctly. He is always involved with everything. He is heavily sought after by every team because they want his expertise, they want his opinion. However, Disney has paid Ryan Reynolds 200 something million dollars. That is going to be the guy. They want Ryan Reynolds, they want Deadpool, they want yuck yucks in the box office, they want somebody who has a, is an instant draw and as much as Pedro Pascal is a mega star, Ryan Reynolds is a little bit bigger than him. And I think that Ryan Reynolds taking this role of Deadpool, he's also going to, just because he's Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool, be sprinkled all over everything. So I think he's the guy who they're going to put on their back, so to speak, especially with his movie being the only movie being released this year. Clearly, they have a lot invested in Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool. I appreciate where you're coming from with that point. I disagree here. Ryan Reynolds was significantly higher, larger, bigger of a name than Pedro Pascal going into the MCU. You're Pedro, doing like a, you said. Hold on, hold on. You're doing a direct comparison from their points in their career. You're talking that, about the Robert Downey Jr. of the Marvel universe being Iron Man, being the focal point, being the guy who connects everything. Being that. So if you're talking career wise, hold, that's a different argument. Hold on. Hold on. The point that I was going to make was, of course, Ryan Reynolds price tag was going to be significantly higher. Of course it was because it's Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what kind of impact the character itself is going to have on the franchise going forward, I don't believe Deadpool is going to have a bigger impact on the MCU than Reed Richards will because Reed Richards is going to be that guy that leads every major conflict that there is. You mean to tell me that Deadpool is going to lead everybody in the, in the secret wars movie? Hold on. No. You're also, you're yeah. also assuming that they're going to go comic book realism. Right. Realistic. Exactly. Just like they didn't do an in game. And like, I couldn't stand that. Right. They may not have that big of a plan for Reed Richards. Fantastic four could flop like it has every other time before, because people are like, you know what? Don't really care about fantasy. Yeah, but so could so could Deadpool three though. Uh, but, but, but but here's the thing: you're saying you don't know how much of an impact Deadpool's going to have. Looking at the trailer alone, the TVA is coming to him. The D Disney or Disney and Marvel allowed him to release a trailer where he calls himself Marvel Jesus, and he's the one bringing everything together. <laughs> and he's going off and do you know the opening of of Avengers Avengers Age of Ultron. He looks like he's fighting in front of the Fox logo with everything from you know the x-men and all that stuff being brought and we have the character who played pyro coming back that is really really huge and that's not to undercut what pascal's done but let's also think about this ryan reynolds is coming off with two guaranteed home runs in deadpool one and two he is a commodity and somebody that disney is paying for that commodity because they know dude deadpool 3 could bring in more money than some of these avengers movies it's going to be insane and if he does that i mean not, listen we all love pedro pascal nobody's saying he's bad but damn when you have something like ryan reynolds and deadpool and what he's been for comics 
remember the first comic lull that we started having first comic fatigue where people are like all right this is kind of starting to get on my nerves that cgi trailer of deadpool leaked and instantly everybody was like oh my god give me this he's been a draw since he's been a rumor so i don't know man i think it's hard to say whether or not it's going to be pascal or reynolds but in my opinion as of right now, if I had to bet my mortgage on it, I'm going with Ryan Reynolds. Mm, yeah. um, <clears throat> anyway, that being it said, be a bad bet. it wouldn't be yeah. a bad bet. Um, if we're cool with that, let's move on because we have one more segment we have to do and we haven't taken a break yet. So let's take that break. And then we're going to start going over something that we haven't really talked about a lot. And that's Marvel villains in the MCU and a little bit connected. So we'll get right back with that and we'll see you guys on the other side. All right. All right. And we're back. So. One thing that we wanted to do was go over the villains in the MCU, like I said, and kind of talk about their portrayals by actors that, that have played them, and whether it's multiple movies or whatnot, and their overall impact on the MCU. Okay, so we're going to start from the beginning, and I'm just going to go by the character name and in the actor if we need to, but uh, let's start at the very beginning, Iron Man 1. Iron Monger, Obadiah Stane in uh, in Iron Man. And I, the way we're going to do this is like your typical ranking systems. You have A, B, C, D, and F, and then we have the S tier. Now, if we put some people in the S tier that don't belong, you're going to hear from me and a lot of millions of angry fans. So be careful, boys. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm going to give Obadiah, uh, based off impact alone, I'm going to give him B tier, uh, simply because he was the villain that kicked everything off. Like uh, the wheels were set in motion because of him. Now, Je you know, Jeff Bridges gave us a, a great performance. I thought it was a great performance as Obadiah. Um, but there's an impact there that lasts because when you go back to Iron Man one, like I, I threw on Iron Man one a couple weeks ago and just watch it just because it's like, you know what? This was actually a really good villain. Compared to some of the villains we've gotten since then, he was a really good villain for that movie. So I'd go B, or B tier for sure. I would give him uh, a C plus. I, was I, C I think only to. because his actual overall uh, impact was corporate greed. I mean, sure, he he ended up making Iron Man become Iron Man, but I think the the other than that, his his portrayal is excellent. I agree. I mean, he, he wasn't really, to me, that menacing in a sense that he gets the suit at the end and all he does is use a gadget with a special teams group of guys against the guys out in the desert. I, I can't argue with yours because obviously I get where you're coming from. And he definitely launched the entire MCU in terms of bad guys, but I'm putting him as a C plus. I mean, yeah, that's all right. Rhino, where, Ryan, where are you going? I'm probably going to C2. Okay, how about this? This is a good one. Emil Blonsky's Abomination. Now, this does count as the Incredible Hulk and his appearance in the She-Hulk series. D. Yeah, I was going to say D. Probably. He doesn't really do anything. He's just there. Yeah. Overall impact is a non-factor. He did not impact the MCU at all. He kind of challenged the Hulk for a little bit. I'm going to put him in the D tier. He's not an F. He's a, he's a D tier. Uh, one that is going to have to be revisited, revisited heavily. General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, the Incredible Hulk. He has also been in uh, Age of Ultron. He was in Civil War. Uh, End game. He was in Civil War. How do we rank Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross? I still think I give him a D as well right now. I'm okay. giving him a C plus for now, but that is uh, contingent upon what we see going forward with Harrison Ford. I'm going to give him for impact as a villain an F. Oh, that, that's honestly, I was kind of leaning that way too because I'm like, he's an F, but I think after Thunderbolts, he could be bumped up to a B. Well, in his defense, he also hasn't quite been a villain yet either. Right. So his I. Impact I I'm May not arguing the F, William. but yeah, I think of impact of overall portrayal. William Hurt's perfect; he's great. He did a, he did an yeah. excellent job, yeah. but yeah, eh, we'll see. I totally forgot he was in all those movies that you said. I just remember from the Incredible Hulk. I am going to overlook another villain in this movie to talk about another guy who I think we're going to see again. I'm going to skip over with Whiplash 
uh, and Ivan Va- Ivan Vanko, oh, and man. I'm gonna go to Justin Hammer, baby. Hammer time. What do you think about Justin Hammer? What I wanted to talk about was Omega Red. So, <laughs> Justin Justin Hammer is another dude where um, I'm gonna give him a C, just a flat C right now. Also contingent upon what we see out of him in Armor Wars, the actor himself, like the Crazy. actor who plays. What do you mean? <laughs> That's insane to me. Go ahead. The actor who plays Justin Hammer, absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely love that dude. And he knocked Justin Hammer out of the park. Yes. But in Iron excuse me, in Iron Man 2, he really didn't have that big of an impact. He I, really I, didn't. So no. I, I'm kind of with you. I'm gonna get him in the C C minus only because his portrayal to me is one of my favorite in the MCU. 100 percent 100 percent Rockwell. I think he's so good, and I think he's yep. also another one that's gonna need to be revisited. Here's a good one. Here's a really hold good on, one. On. Go ahead. If you're talking about impact, I think Whiplash had more of an impact than Hammer did, right? Whiplash isn't Whiplash without Justin Hammer. Whiplash also is one of the reasons why we ended up getting roadie though yeah and i thought like iron man i thought i can't, i don't i may be mixing them up but wasn't him like pushing his suit like further and making the stuff that he did and make iron man kind of get back to it he yeah, uh that's all yeah. he did all he did was call out the design and say palladium in the chest is a painful way to die and iron man figured out the rest and iron man had already figured out that palladium in the chest was killing him if if we isolate just iron man 2 whiplash had a bigger impact on the storyline than than okay uh, yeah yeah but i'm still going with hammer i i think overall once we hit armor wars justin hammer's gonna skyrocket past whiplash here's a here's the first really big hitter loki loki oh, s you know, tom hiddleston s he's got there s you know. s tier that's he yes. there's only one person I put above Loki. Actually, and you could make the argument that there's nobody above Loki, but there's only one person I put above Loki, and that's Thanos. As a villain. As a villain. Yeah, as a, as villain. a villain. Yeah. As a villain. Thanos. You're gonna put Tom Hiddleston as a and Loki as an S tier. Yeah. Hundred percent. I'm hundred percent. A tier for villain. Overall character in the MCU, S plus plus. Tom Hiddleston as as the anti villain Loki. I think as a villain total, he's an A. He was in compelling. He was able to pull the Avengers together. A tier, absolutely. But he doesn't but, become an anti-hero until Thor Ragnarok, though. I know, but we're talking about overall. I mentioned Loki as a character, not not his portrayal in the. No, in no, no. Aven- I, no I'm, I'm sorry. The point that I'm making with that is he had several movies of straight up villainy. Yeah, yeah. Thor that puts that puts him in S tier. Thor. And Avengers. Thor and 2. One. Thor 2, the Dark World, he was not a villain. He, yes, he was. No, he wasn't. How, how, prove, so, show me how he was a villain in Thor Dark World. How does the movie end? He hides and takes Odin's place. Villain. <laughs> Why? I mean, that's, Why? That's, pretty, that's pretty villainous, don't you think? Right. No, he didn't kill him. I don't think so. He could have tried to kill Thor. He just didn't want to be messed with. He just wanted to be loved. I and even Odin was like, "Ah, it was pretty good. You did a good job." But he, he still, at, at the right. end of the day, he still deceived everybody. He still, you know, went behind everyone's back. He still lied. He still, I mean, it's it's still a villainous thing to do. Okay. I mean, the man also destroyed half of New York. Final answer A. Final answer A for me. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. Going with the mess um let's see let me find another really good one. Oh, here we go johan schmidt the red skull where are you b. putting red skull b i'm putting him at b i don't even have a thought process on this i <laughs> yeah i okay. almost forget some of these guys are villains if i'm being quite honest I, I can get down with that. Okay. The only reason why I'm putting him at at B is because his his overall motive was it was higher than that of a like a street level villain. I mean, okay. he was going for the Tesseract. He was going for world domination. He was going for uh, intergalactic travel. You know, all those things. So I, I that he was ahead of his time. It, he was ahead of his time. So that's why he is he is a B and not like a C plus plus or something like that. But yeah, I, I think I'm gonna give him a C. Okay. I think it's safe for me. 
Uh, I'm going to give him uh, a C plus. I think he's, I think he's good. I think he like Hugo weaving to me kind of stains red skull, how much he hated it and didn't want to do it and wouldn't even return to, to do the character that kind of pisses me off, but his yeah. impact, he goes up against cap loses to cap. Now he's another one who is free. That's that's Canon that the red skull is no longer bound to Vormir. So he can get, but he can leave. So he could have another impact. He could come back and do something. But as of right now, uh, he's not there for me. Uh, how about Guy Pierce as Aldrick Killian in the Mandarin? <laughs> F. <laughs> F. F. Immediate F. F. I absolutely hated him. I hated him. First of all, Iron Man three is bad. <laughs> it's it's a bad movie. I I love Robert Downey to, uh, Jr. to death. I love the Iron Man franchise to death. That is a bad movie. Yeah, it's not good. It's yeah, not uh... good. Man, only because I like Kingsley so much, I want to give him at least a D. I'll give him a D. He was also the one entertaining. Yeah, I guess I could get with that. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. Let's move forward in the MCU a little bit. Do we say Bucky? Yeah, because he was a villain for his first couple uh, iterations in the, the MCU. I mean, at least in uh, um, Winter Soldier, the beginning oh. of Civil War, you could have considered him... Uh -huh. and honestly for me he didn't have a thought process you know what yeah I mean? he yeah. was just a bot turned on go do like that for me doesn't really make him a villain it makes him like a lackey more so than anything hmm. i'd probably give him a d plus to be honest with you as a villain i i have to agree with that honestly yeah because i mean like i said he didn't have it he didn't care he you was said just doing what he was doing you said an interesting thing there a uh a bot to be turned on that brings us to our next person james spader in ultra i'm just gonna give hey. him a i love james spader I'm going to get, well, here, this is another one that's contingent upon <laughs> yeah. uh, what happens going forward because he he definitely can be S tier 1000%. I'm giving him A++++ right on the verge <laughs> only because we got him in one movie and I desperately need him in more. But yeah, I mean, he's right there on the cusp of S tier. Yeah, he is. He is one that I will need to see more of. But that being said, one movie i'm still putting him as an a-tier villain i mean absolutely 100 percent a tier but uh after that let's see the list gets kind of convoluted i think and forgive me if i'm wrong but i think we all have uh, uh thanos as an s tier villain -tier, yeah, yeah that's not even well we're, we're skipping we're skipping a couple here we are but we're coming back all right i think it's kind of uh He's not touchable right now. He's the bar. I honestly, mean, if there was if there was a level above S tier, Thanos would be. I mean, there's honestly it's Thanos, and then there's thirty feet of shit, and then there's the S tier. <laughs> okay, that's that's. I mean, that's a fair assessment. How about uh, let's let's go with a little bit lower level than that. How about Eric Killmonger? I was gonna say for me, I'd probably put him in an S. A S Killmonger. I just love him. Why? For what he represented in the, in the story and how he pushed the Black Panther and changed him, like <clears throat> to me, him seeing his father die or get killed, finding Panther claws, mm -hmm. having nothing to know about anything, meeting up with Clay, I mean uh, Claw, getting to back to Wakanda, and then taking over and fighting him for the throne and then taking over, and then sick, pretty much sicking all their uh, technology on white people. To me, that's kind of funny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> What are you trying to say, Ryan? I'm just saying it's funny because he wasn't he wasn't shy about it. He didn't change either. You know what I mean? Like I just realized you asked me for my Wi-Fi password like four times. You trying to set me up? <laughs> What's I would give uh, I would give Killmonger a B minus. I just wish they and had honestly your your rant your rant just pushed me from a, a C plus up to B minus because I don't want to be racist. Kind of had the opposite effect on me. I'm gonna give Killmonger a big C. Oh. I just I don't I don't I don't understand why the big draw is for Killmonger. I liked him more in Wakanda Forever than I did in the actual Black Panther movie. I think he had a bigger impact in Wakanda Forever. I think he I don't know. I just I just couldn't I couldn't identify with it. I really couldn't. Yeah. Because somebody who said that we're you're keeping everyone down, you're keeping everyone down, 
and or the, or the, the white people were keeping everyone down. He is somebody who came from, you know, the the streets of L.A. or where was he from L.A. or was yeah, there was yeah, yeah no, it's L.A. Yeah, in Compton, oh, he one. found his way from Compton into the United States military, where he was a special ops soldier, the highest he could ever have achieved, and he did that on his own by by kicking ass and and using the system that he hated. I was kind of like, but you won. You've you are what you want to be, and now you're at this point where you're going after the most powerful nation in the world. I didn't understand the motivation because I, I don't know. I, and hey, granted, I'm I'm just a white guy. What do I know? But I just it didn't it didn't resonate with me because I was just kind of like I don't know. I, I think it had more to do with him knowing that too that he was royalty from being from Wakanda. Right. His dad being killed, and then them pretty much nobody coming to help him. I would have no been, one turning their back on him, that, knowing and, what they are as a nation. And that changes to me from a C to an A if he's about destroying the hierarchy of Wakanda. Now, if he just wanted to go into Wakanda and tear it down from top to bottom and say, mm -mm, I'm the one who belongs to be here. I'm the royalty. I'm I mean, the one who's going to do this. But his ulterior motive was not to get back at Wakanda. But essentially it was. That's what he did, though. He went in there. He became king. Uh -huh. And now he's like, bro, there's a bunch of people that look like us. Uh huh. We're going to go start using our resources to help them. I think to... Here. To expound on Jack's point just a little bit, like his entire his entire issue, you know, throughout the the beginning of the movie was, you know, the oppression uh, of black people, and and he was upset with the system. It would have held a little bit more water with me had he gone after the system. Like if his if if his argument was, I'm going to use the technology in Wakanda to take down the American government and the politicians and you know the people in power, that would have been a lot more understanding than just him saying we're going to kill white people. I mean, I don't know. I I, I see both sides, but yeah. for me, where he landed was a was a firm C. I think he had a lot more potential to do what he could have done. Honestly, he could have done a great job as becoming the next Black Panther in Wakanda Forever. I could have seen that. That's what I was hoping for. Because honestly. I could have seen him having a change of change heart of, of heart. what what T'Challa wanted and saying, okay, I can see where we can improve the lives of people that look like us without going to war with the entire world. Exactly. But that's all he's never known, which is violence. So he yeah. just went and did it. All right, let's take it down a notch from there. And let's talk about um, Ronan, the accuser. Boring to me. D. I agree. D. Face paint. D. Oh, yeah. Did he deep do anything for me? The original Ronan was was pretty good. Uh, the guy they replaced Ronan with was laughable because he had no impact on the Marvels. It would didn't mean anything. So you, yeah, the guy they the Ronan, the, the, Ronan the accuser in the Marvels or not the Marvels, uh, uh, Captain Marvel. Oh, that was that was not the original Ronan the accuser. Yeah, it's it's Lee Pace in both. Yep, Lee Pace in both movies. I, I could have swore they replaced him in Captain Marvel. Nope. It's him. He just doesn't have the fanatic paint down his eyes. Yeah. But it's the same guy. I'm Googling it right now. Yeah. He just, he was forgettable. But let's stay on the Guardian's track. Ego. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give Ego a C. I give him a D. Really? A C, I'm, going with yeah. a, I'm going with a B. A B for Ego. He was swallowing planets from across the galaxy. He was killing hundreds of children, and he was that close to winning. And I mean, let's think about it. If Peter Quill doesn't do what he does, the MCU looks very different. Oh, it is Lee Pace. I didn't know that. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Uh, the reason the reason why I give that uh, a, a C is that um, it, the performance was forgettable. Like that wasn't Kurt Russell's best work in my opinion i there's just it was it was like okay can we get somebody else on the screen <laughs> i don't, don't it was a good movie i'm not you know guardians 2 is is up there in probably my my top 12 but it just was a forgettable performance okay i, I don't i don't I, I mean like kurt russell come on man that guy's just he's just one of them guys he does good with what he does so if it's if it's a limit for kurt russell i think it might be the writing and it's james gunn yeah. 
I still think it was a great performance. But anyway, let's move on. Let's finish out the Guardian, shall we? High evolutionary. B plus. Okay. I actually enjoyed the high evolutionary more than I did ego. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the performance of yeah. not just the actor as the high evolutionary, but also the movie itself was much better than two. I yeah. think I still drop him into D. High evolutionary? Yeah. Oh, he was great. He was phenomenal, dude. Uh, I mean, he's so he's eccentric. As far as going to the uh, his effect on the MCU, he didn't really do anything. Yeah. If that's well, what it, it, too, but if that's, see, that's, that's true. I mean, that's true. Guardians, Guardians 3 wasn't one of those movies, though. I mean, the movie itself had no impact on the MCU. Doesn't matter. That's how we're ranking the villains. I'm yeah, just saying. that's true. No, <laughs> like, true story. It has nothing to do with anything. Like, yeah. I mean, MCU had really only affected the For Guardians. Me, it only affected the Guardians, and mainly it just destroyed yeah. your pocket. So, okay. The performance was outstanding, though. I can't remember what, what is that guy's name. I can't remember his name. I don't know, but he's from uh, he's from Peacemaker, <laughs> and I loved the fact that he made the jump with James Gunn. Uh, yeah. Only a few more, really, to talk about. Uh, how about Namor? Namor. Uh, uh, D minus. F. Really, of overall. Yeah impact in the mcu yeah. the discovery of an entire underwater planet i'm gonna give him a c regardless but i don't know man i think it, it could have been better here's one that I, I hate this is one that i hate that we have to judge but it's not gonna be a great one gore the god butcher christian Death. bale christian so bale. i'm going to give this a C plus 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 just barely below B. And I know everything about this movie absolutely sucked, with the exception of Gore the God Butcher. I'm gonna give it a D. I think uh there was nothing you could have done, even Christian Bale, to to make that movie any better. It was just so bad, and I, 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 I will never forgive Taika for that movie. It was so <laughs> bad. You, how do you make Christian Bale, Chris Hemsworth, you know, uh, that whole entire ensemble, how do you make that movie so incredibly bad? Taika. All right. A couple more to talk about, and this one's going to definitely be one that needs uh, a revisit. I hope. Kang the Conqueror. Ooh. So far, I'm going to give him a B minus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. When it was Jonathan Majors and it was going to be him, I was really rooting for him because I yeah, love him. Me too. Yeah. I mean, me, I'm, like you gave for Christian Bale, I'm giving him a B plus, 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 plus. And if he was coming back for another movie to be Kang, he's an A, easily an A. Yeah, I think uh, if it was Jonathan Majors, and this this is also recency bias because we've seen Jonathan Majors and what he can do, he could have eventually been S tier easily, easily yeah. S tier. Yeah. Now, if they end up going with uh, uh, Denzel's son to recast, great. Who knows? Who great. knows what we we could still get an S S plus tier character. Yeah. Okay. Let's finish it off with somebody <laughs> that is our most recent villain in the uh, in the universe. And I'm forgetting her name already. She was the bad guy from the Marvels. What oh, the Ronan her? variant? She was just another leader of the people. I can't. Darvin something. Old uh, bitch I'm giving face. her. What's, what's lower than F? <laughs> Old bitch face. That's what's an lower than an F? Let's see. I got her here. <laughs> what is her name? It's on here. We had a couple of different lists that we were looking at. Uh. Oh, there Zoe it is. As Aston, Darben. She's Darben. 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 She F. was she was an accuser. She was an accuser, just like Ronan was. F. Yeah. Uh, the lowest possible. I mean, honestly, that's an incomplete. That's a you withdrew from my class <laughs> you and got mean. a refund before the date. By the way, we I, I finally saw Marvels. I saw it was seen. bad. It was bad. Okay. I'm gonna go to bat for Marvels. All right. I've seen some terrible comic book movies i've seen terrible movies i've seen movies that when it was done i was like i will never watch that again eternals <laughs> this ain't that i think 
we're used to some bad performances. I think they didn't know what kind of movie they wanted to be. The problem is they have three excellent leads in this movie and they didn't know what to do with them. And the problem is the villain was just a consequence. She was overshadowed. She, to me, didn't do anything. She was, she was irrelevant to the movie. Almost. Almost. And, and like, she didn't do, I don't know. There was no backbone to her. She just showed up and did nothing but call Carol Danvers the Annihilator. And these villains that don't ever see reason and don't ever have any sort of, you know what? Maybe there's a way around this. Maybe I'm I'm wrong, right? The villains that are just so blindly, no, you're bad. I'm good. I know what I'm doing is right. This is just one of those so such forgettable, forgettable villains. I would have rather seen all three of the ladies work through a problem they had together to solve like a geological crisis or maybe helping the scrolls or something for 90 minutes than watching them fight Darben. There's a couple there's a couple big ones that you forgot that I kind of want to throw out there if I may. Okay. Uh the first one is Malekith. Who? Thor yeah. 2. Yeah, uh, overall impact is pretty big cuz he kills Frigga, but I'm still the performance and the, all that I'm putting him as an F. F I would I would have given him a D minus. Uh that's the the L from Thor I, 2. I, I didn't miss him. I purposefully skipped him. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, then you you did you did forget one that I know you didn't skip on purpose. Let's hear it. There's no way you skipped uh, Zhu Wenwu on purpose. No, no, no. I would not have skipped him on purpose. That's the villain. I'm giving him. I'm giving him an A minus. From who? Shang Chi. Shang Chi, the dad from Shang Chi. Oh, but as his impact on the MCU. Not that big. Hey. Well, no, no, that's no, it's not true. Rings. He gave Shang Chi the ten rings. He's, he is also the ten rings from all of the rest of history. Yes. So he's expecting and an immortal for a very long time. And the performance alone, I'm well, giving Zhu Wen Wu a solid A. So, solid A. Yeah. Other than if that, that wait, movie, but if I'm giving him an A, I've got to give Loki an A plus plus and put him towards the the uh, yeah. the S tier. So other than that movie, where else are the ten rings really used? Uh, in, Every, everywhere. That's yeah. that's who kid that's who kidnapped Iron Man was the Ten Rings, and yeah. the in the literally the original Iron Man it was the Ten Rings that kidnapped him, yeah. but not that guy, is what I'm saying. No, but it was but his his name has been synonymous with Marvel the since the very beginning. The Ten Rings right. have been, yeah, the Mandarin. No, oh. uh, the only other one that uh, in this one it, I already know the grade, Hold but on. I just wanted we to throw this get, name. We didn't get one for Ryan. For oh, sorry, zip. my bad. I mean, I mean, other than that one particular movie, I still don't see his impact. So, like, I'm still gonna go with a D. Hmm. So this, this, the last one I'm gonna throw out there is one of those ones where, like, it may have been forgettable at first, but could have a much bigger impact going forward. Uh, and that's Dormammu. <laughs> oh man, because his little lackey was awful, Mads Mikkelsen. I yeah. don't get it with that guy. Everybody wants him to play everything. I don't get it. I hate. I, I hate him. I can't I stand him. One movie that I was like, "Damn, he was good in that." And it's where he's a he's a retired uh, hitman who lives in the mountains. That was the best movie I've seen from him. Other than oh, that, yeah. somebody help me understand. It's the big thing Hannibal. about this guy. It's his. Uh, I can't stand him. Somebody help me get it. I don't. He was really dark. Dormammu has a chance to grow on the list. I'd give him a D minus right now, but with Doctor Strange three and the the foreshadowing they gave with Dormammu's daughter and all that crap, you know, the woman that becomes Doctor Strange's wife, right? I mean, he could have a much bigger role going forward. It also shows him D. going back into Dormammu's realm. Yeah, which, if I'm not mistaken, breaks the truce with Dormammu. You That's really exactly right. You let me go. You never come back. So if yep. Doc Strange come ba comes back, then Dormammu is going to be like, okay, well, deals off. And, and what does Doctor Strange have anymore? Time Stone. They put it in the garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't Those know. Those were the three I wanted to throw out. You guys, do you guys think we missed? 
Anybody? Uh, I mean, wanna... oh, we did. We did miss one. Okay. That I think was a decent um, from the original Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man. Oh, uh, uh, Vulture. Doc Vulture, yeah. Vulture. Oh, we're talking this Spider-Man. Okay. I'll give Vulture. Give, uh, I would give him a B minus, 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 minus. I think I still give him like a, a C. He didn't really move with the story. He would probably be. Okay. He's good at that, but doesn't have any weight in the MCU as a whole. That's what we're basing it on. That's why I go. All right. So what about Black Adam? As the structure of power is about Z. to change. Z. I will leave. I will leave this Z. show right now. <laughs> no, guys. Seriously. I mean, he was compelling. He Chet, threw, draft my two week notice. He, he yeah. threw. You know what? He Fuck that. We just through, night. through structural, structurally sound objects. And he was like. <laughs> hey chat write me too on that motherfucker all right guys well put ryan's name like down the alter ego podcast will be me next week i'm sorry i don't have anybody to bounce it off of because i ain't iron chet he doesn't even work for anything now Shit. uh buffalo nickels that'll do for us guys thank you for tuning in to episode 167 of the alter ego podcast i've been your host jack austin with me as always mr ryan Mr. Rhino, I pointed to the wrong people, Rhino. but there you go. Oh, yeah. And happy birthday to Rhino. Thank How you. you? Uh, I am 49, 37. Wow. I mean, you look really good for 49. You do. I look terrible for 37. Big 5-0. <laughs> See you all next week.